Hello, today I wanted to talk about my experiences at Dutch Nationals uh, happening last weekend. Uh, unfortunately, um, I didn't have as much time to practice as I uh, wanted, which is totally on me. I, um, I had other things doing and I didn't prioritize uh, the game as much as I could have, but I wasn't really feeling the matter currently. Um, I chose to go on uh, Bravo. So, um, talking about it. So I chose to uh, go on Bravo, having been an all in uh, main for a very long time, as it was the easiest switch to make. I did test out. Uh, the Rimf, yeah, but I wasn't completely confident in her ability uh, versus decks like um, Lexi or Dromai. So I feel if I put some more um, practice into it, um, I could have um, had a shot at those matchups. Um, but I chose the easy option and uh, went for Bravo, making the easier switch uh, in terms of. Uh, gameplay. Uh, so let's discuss. Uh, alpha equipment, very standard. I chose to run free AB um, and no tuning. Decks kind of switch up which of those they do. Uh, but I prefer this setup. Having the AB free uh, makes me feel a lot more confident in the wide Dutch uh, field. As we have a few KNs running around, we had a few Icelanders, so I wanted to AB3 uh, as insurance, go AB3, uh, tectonic plating, Anatos, plays flow, uh, control the game. Uh, then we go. Um, then, uh, oh yeah, uh, in terms of Cyber Plan, I almost always go with Anatos, Titan's Fist, Tilbury Bucker are for uh, grindy matchups, I think. Ninja, Fink, Lexi, uh, Ranger in general, and the um, don't know what else. Basically, those the the matchups you need to defend a lot, where you only often get to keep one card in hand. Um, this is also for, for there since uh, free uh, the Steel Blade Bucker presents free HP in that in those games. Uh, in terms of deck, it's all fairly standard. Uh, there's not much spice into there. I think like 95% of, of Bravo decks are basically the same. It's it's a very um, focused deck at the moment. Uh, that leans heavily on having amazing cards like uh, Krippen Crush, Starstruck. Like when, when those hits, it feels amazing. Um, but if they don't, you uh, you really suffer. You're very dependent on those hitting. In my f uh, in my feeling, or at least uh, fretting them to hit. And against some decks, that, that's um, easier said than done. Lexi being good one, where if you have them back to back, uh, it's a non-game, and otherwise you're doing a whole lot of blocking. Uh, what I did decide to do is I I played zero war among his opponents, and I felt the card. Uh, was really awkward in the deck as um, it didn't feel relevant enough against Lexi, um, and you needed to time it right. Like you're uh, not blocking with it, you're um, you need to guess on playing it at the right amount, and there are certain tells for it. Um, but I just thought it was worth it, and I missed it zero times. I, I didn't miss it at all in the deck. I think it's a lot better in Icelander than it, than it is um, in Bravo. Uh, what I did do was I ran two final fighting cards. Um, I chose to cut one for a pulverize because the Dutch meta usually has a lot of guardians and Bravo was the third most um, played deck at the event. So a lot of those 
a lot of those got whittled down. There, there were a few in the top twenty-four, but uh, top eight was all was all Dromai, Alexi, uh, Bolton that eventually won, uh, and it's definitely worth uh, looking at the video on Tales uh, Tales of Our, uh, what is it? Tales of Alex? He's, he's called uh, discussing with the winner and the deck deck. So that, so, and that's, uh, and my cyborg uh, kind of represented. Like, I was expecting a lot of Lexi, like a lot of Dromai, uh, a few Guardians. So there's uh, Stonges for the Guardian matchups, uh, Pommels to push um, the Dromai in the mirror, and Paul Rice for, for the mirror uh, to have something to find off of, like Imposing Visage into Showtime. Uh, my matchups for today was first round a Dorinthia. Bravo has a um, pretty good game against Dorinthia, especially if you you know uh, the deck, you know what cards to expect. So you can um, handle all the tells. So that game went pretty well. I was able to set up a um, dominant pos uh, board position uh, where I could take a, take a big turn and just uh, have a bigger turn. Uh, back, uh, putting uh, full stops on them. A second round against the Uzuri, a very close game. I made a greedy um, block where I misjudged the opponent's uh, last card in hand uh, and lost all tempo on that. Uh, and they won with having like four cards left in deck. Uh, having lost, I was like, okay. Trying to win the last one, the last one was against a dash, and it was like very rough. He, had, uh, he was able to block out a few of the uh, very big uh, attacks really well. Uh, he, he was running two chambers, three purifiers. He uh, banished one off of a boost, and I f was hoping he was running the um, 2 2 or 3 2 variant with three incubation chambers uh, but unfortunately it was running two chambers and three purifiers so at a, uh, in the end I um, wasn't able to do anything um, so start of day uh, one two was uh, not feeling I wasn't really feeling monor uh, draft as I don't really like the format uh, for competitive events with how this set is designed. Um, first round, I saw a few solid generic cards in the draft. Le uh, Levia seemed open. I went into Levia, and it was it was real rough. It was a very generic deck, but I got a lot of good generics like Adrenaline Rush, uh, Pound for Pounds, some uh, some just some solid generic cards with a few very good. Uh, Levia cards, but nothing too um, really exciting. Unfortunately, get, get a Shadow Puppetry and I got a Genesis, um, both non foil, um, out of those packs. So, something win 1 2. Uh, the only game I won was against one of the other two Levias. Like, we have three Levias in, in the in the pod. It was, a, it was a real pain. So, it was uh, us slapping each other. Until someone missed, yeah, it was real sad. Uh, the second round, I um, first pack, I had a rather rear guard red, just a popper, just nothing fancy. Uh, and then uh, I saw with the cards coming that light was very open. Um, was debating going light with Bolton or with um, Prism. I chose Bolton. Because what I got was a lot of um, just generically good light cards, and also um, the weapon attack plus Plowthrows, Dust Belt Pilgrimages. I got free Secret Light and Reds, and just some some good attacks to pass along, free poppers. Um, so it, was, it wasn't like a um, conventional bolt deck, like there wasn't that much charging. It's more like just good stuff with um, with light, 
uh, cars and charging, having the support for the axis as a backup to still do like 11 damage turns or 8 damage turns uh, off of two cards if there's a card in soul. Uh, so in the second round of drafts I went 3-0, uh, played against another Bolt in the Mirror, who was running a more conventional Bolt in the deck. He had a Luminite, a Fever Vanguard, uh, was a really tight game, um, and I won it basically off of the back of just having more uh, generically good cards uh, that were able to um, push me ahead. Because I didn't need to rely as much on charging. And I also had a lot more non attack action cards I could block with. Uh, second round play against a Prism. I had a lot of cards I could put into deck. Because um, everyone was feeling that their decks were kind of mediocre, so a lot of armor got um, taken up really early. Did get a Gallantry Gold, but uh, no Iron Hide, no Time Skippers. Um, so I had a really thick deck, and basically I uh, fatigued out the Prism player. Just block a lot, uh, do efficient attacks, um, to threaten um, Auras if they made any. Um, so I wasn't that concerned with them hitting for like one off of a Herald. Because if they spend a card to make a... Um, Spectral Shield, then they're more enticed to block, which turns on um, the buff from Bolton for charging. Uh, so, completely mailed the deck out. Uh, still uh, pretty tight, but it didn't feel too bad. Uh, last game I played against Olivia, um, had an amazing uh, opening, went first, got a Seek Enlightenment plus a Surging Militia Red. Uh, so they came in for 8, and with every card he blocked, he got plus 1. Uh, so in the end, uh, he blocked with 3 cards, because the last one didn't block. Well, 2, 2 blocks. So my card went to 11, he blocked for 7. Took 4 damage, card from the soul. I put a second swing into our stall, and my, I just took everything he did his first turn. Um, and I came back for 11 again. Um, so it was really a rough on him. Um, so the free out definitely helped because I went one two in in CC one two first draft rounds and free out in the second draft rounds. So I was I was very happy with that. It really saved my first day. Second uh, day, um, three rounds of CC, hoping to get into the top twenty four for money um, to recoup my travel expenses. Uh, first round I had buy because of a no show. Really happy with that. Um, was able to see a bit around, grab a coffee because I didn't pay attention to book a hotel, so I had to drive for over an hour every day back and forth. Um, second round against Alexi, uh, who was playing a variant with doubled remembrance, was a miserable matchup. I got attack, he played three of a kind like five times. Um, Codex like four times, and I was completely done with it. I'm, I'm so sick of that, of the deck. Only thing I did basically was block. It was miserable. Um, and then last round I played against a Katsu, uh, which went a little bit better. Block efficiently to threaten big, big attacks with relevant on hit effects, spinal crushes, crippling crushes. Um, and got really tight. I was on 1 8 HP uh, at one point, both had one, and my opponent uh, only had two cards left in the deck, and he had an Art of War in hand. Um, he played the Art of War, banished the card, drew two. I only had a free block in hand, so anything with base attack free killed me. And he drew two cards uh, with attack two, and I was able to block for free, and survive and uh, grind the game out so at the end 7-5 I got into 27th place so still out of 89 players not too bad but I was definitely hoping for uh, for better 
and then we went over to the uh, PTI event where I decided to play a old favorite, Kasai with uh, Icelander out of the uh, meta Kasai has a lot more game, you're losing uh, you don't have to worry about frostbites like the one frostbite from like Olam or, or like sometimes Alexi isn't too bad because your uh, the deck is very efficient one bomb blue fuels the entire turn with often a resource floating and then um, but having the frostbite and the arcane damage is a real pain um, so I played against a uh, so first of all Kasai, Brief of Blazers, Saber, Scourge is all very standard uh, not much exciting there's a deck. I am playing Minerva. I'm a I'm a fan of the card. It really helps against like fatigue, uh, fatigue decks. Ira, Riptide, uh, Riptide not so much, um, but against um, Guardians, against Guardians is very nice. Uh, full Blade Runners, Hit and Run, Red and Blues, uh, Suite of the better uh, reactions and buffs. Uh, one route route really helps to finish games because off of a single boo with entire saber and route that's still a five so uh, that sometimes gets uh, players on uh, greedy blocks. Sigma is just very good. Slice dice, um, red and yellows. I could have switched out the yellows for for blues, but this felt fine because then your second swing still comes in for four. Uh, spells are very solid and uh, one worse fella red um, for go again and just for having a slightly bigger attack that demands blocks which is nice on like stuff like after blood and puncture uh, blow hands run through just very standard I'm running one still blade chunt because I feel I felt that there were gonna be a lot of um, Kasai's and that was definitely the case there were a lot of Kasai's there, were, there was a lot of chains um, Cybert's One Nursing Emptiness, two respites uh, for Wizard and for uh, Roomblade, uh, and a triple uh, Null Rune set. I didn't need the Null Rune set at all during the weekend except for one uh, for the Prism and Chain matchups. So I win uh, Prism first. Um, I saw the Arclight Sentinel pretty early in a pitch, so I knew. Uh, kind of where it was in the deck, assuming he only played one, which most decks do, because it's uh, kind of bricky, but it wins your game sometimes. Um, so I was swinging, working towards the Blood on our Hands turn, and when I played the Blood on our, uh, on our Hands turn, I knew uh, I was safe from ALS, and after that it was all working off of Blade Runners, Glints, run throughs not playing any of the uh, non-attack uh, non action cards for go again uh, and it worked out because the uh, at a certain point his deck was completely running out of cards he still had the LS uh, left and um, it was uh, he didn't have any chance of using it um, then a Kasai mirror I think I did uh, I did two of those Two Kasai. I played two Kasai with Prism. Yeah, I played uh, Prism. Kasai uh, was a very tight game. I, I basically only won the game because my opponent um, didn't play both of his shunts in the same turn because I was on two life. Uh, or I was able to play after turn, he was able to play one and the last one he got stuck on. He couldn't uh, play it out anymore because he had no, no other cards left uh, to pitch. Uh, so I was able to finish it out uh, by the skin of my teeth. Round 3. And I play against a Yoji deck. A Yoji full heal and fatigue deck. Uh, which I was able to win in when time was called on exactly full. Because I know, I know the deck it's... Um, it's a lot of heals, a lot of blocky cards. Um, I know I need to play the game as efficiently as possible. So I wasn't um, 
doing like one big turn or I was um, kept doing like really awkward uh, attacks to block uh, completely grind him, him out um, like I, f I, f I swear he uh, he healed like 20 life or 21 life during that game or more and I still killed him on Yoji uh, but it was very rough um, I never blocked because there was no point except for during a Command and Conquer he played and I was fairly confident he didn't play pummels and I made the right call only block with one card and armor um, so I only lost like two cards one for the CNC and another one because I needed to get it out of hand to filter my hand for other turns because I was on full blue at that point uh, and because the game took so long I was able to build up coppers to do full uh, two full uh, blood on hands turn so there's n there was no way uh, the Yoshi was winning uh, that one Minerva really pulling her weight there uh, then I had to play against uh, Donovan previous uh, national champion and uh, he was playing with Shane uh, and I chose to put in the uh, nourishing emptiness no, um, the Oasis of Spice instead of the uh, what did I take out? I took out the Route and the Warrior's Valor I should have also taken out the Minerva um, I was thinking like if I find it early enough I can pressure and if I find it late, I, it chose to block free. But I found it like the midpoint where I was thinking I could keep pressure. But he had uh, a bit of a too too big turn where I wasn't able to put on pressure, so my um, arsenal was locked. So I had a waste of spider at one point in my hands, stuck in my hand. The sink blows couldn't couldn't go into my arsenal. So it was, that was a really big mistake of me, um, and it definitely cost me the game um, then I had to play against uh, another chain who was not playing the regular chain but a um, chain with all the rune gate cards like he was playing all, all three right, widespreads um, vexing uh, no uh, vexing quality hands ebb and fall just just full on and uh, he got a lot of his power cards really early and he played it really well. It was uh, impressive to see because I, I thought it was a bit of a brick but he uh, he managed to make it look uh, effortless so I completely I completely lost that. I didn't uh, manage to prevent enough damage on his power turns and got stomped. Last round um, I played against a Monokasai deck, um, got really tight. I, w I was hoping that because I went 3 0, lost to, uh, to a chain and, and not and the other chain who were both still on the top tables in the last round, that I um, was able to get into top 8. I, wa um, I won the Kasai mirror again and I. Uh, ended up 10th for the PTI event of Worski. So, uh, all in all, I did have a good time despite the heat. It was it like 35 degrees at the store? Everything was open, f fans everywhere. Uh, people were, were <laughs> people were di were almost uh, dying of heat. But all in all, I, I had a lot of fun. Like the only matchup I. I did not enjoy it all was the uh, Lexi matchup because it didn't feel like I was participating I was just waiting for him to to math his way to my demise um, and then for um, for after this um, with bright lights coming up I'm unsure whether Bravo is is going to be viable with bright lights because Dash is already a, a rough matchup and it's probably only going to get worse. Um, I'm I'm going to see what the meta looks like. I 
I'm gonna go back to Dorinthia, play um, depending on how the ban list goes next week. If anything, it's hit at all. Because if they. If Lexi is still such a strong deck after the ban list, I have no idea what I'm gonna play, except maybe Lexi just following along with the. Uh, with some mana and try to um, steal some games. Either way, that was a, a rambly version of my um, Dutch Nationals experience. Uh, shout out to everyone who participated. It was a very good crowd. There was, I, I don't think there were any uh, sh um, sharking or, or mean judge calls or people trying to take an edge. Um, and I'm looking forward to next year. Uh, hopefully, I'll, uh, I'm gonna one day get into the top eight, but it's uh, it's an uphill battle. All right, thanks everyone for for listening and. See you soon.